supposed to diversify. Second, he should understand a, what balance is, what the balance is. And then most of the time, he should just uh, put the money in and let it lie. Now, it turns out that uh, I usually follow that advice, but I've made an exception when, uh, uh, when uh, Bear Stearns uh, exposed the, the, uh, the uh, tip of the iceberg of the, uh, and we had all this volatility, I decided I'd cut back on my uh, uh, equities, and I sold off my ETFs that were in spiders and so on. And, but I kept my CREF, my college retirement equity fund. Uh, and then when the Fed cut the interest rate for the first time by 50 basis points, I decided, you know, it's time to go into commodities. So I took, it, uh, at first I could only persuade my wife to take half the proceeds from the sale of the ETFs and put it into a commodity ETFs. And then by a week later, I took the – so anyway, so, so commodity should be in the, the mix also. But uh, So we're learning a lesson that uh, we, we, I think, too much about securities, but commodity should be in there also. Fascinating. Uh, this next question comes from Frankfurt. Uh, Jens Fischer from Commerzbank AG asks, how does the current liquidity crisis affect your portfolio strategy, the, the subprime and – uh, what what uh, are you expecting next in this crisis? Well, I just asked, I guess, I, uh, he, uh, Mr. Fisher, is it? Uh, uh, obviously, he didn't hear my answer, and I didn't hear his question. But uh, as I said, uh, I usually say just, you know, put some in equities and keep some in <coughs> bonds for U.S. investors, of course, for, uh, you know, reasonably well-to-do U.S. investors, uh, uh, investing out of their 401k, uh, it's going to be uh, muni bo uh, municipal bonds. Uh, but uh, with the current uh, volatility, I've scaled back on uh, uh, equities and I've uh, gone into uh, commodities more. And uh, uh, what do I expect? I'll tell you exactly what I expect. You, you, I'm not much for predictions, but I'll tell you exactly what I expect. Yeah. There is a book called uh, Extraordinary Popular Delusions and the Madness of Crowds. And it's by McKay. I can't remember the first name. Okay. He, I, I think he wrote it in 1850. And it's still, every bit it's relevant now. And he talked about the tulip crisis <coughs> and the South Sea bubble and so on and so forth. Uh, you know, panics and things like that. And uh, so uh, what's happening now is the uh, crowd thunders up and the crowd thunders down, and the crowd thunders up, and someday the things will settle down, and then when things settle down, I'll go back into equities. So you think herd mentality is really influencing uh, the market prices today? Absolutely. Uh, this next question, uh, also from Warsaw, Poland. This is Pavel Zaluski from Forbes Investor, uh, asks, uh, we, we invest in diversified funds, create multi-fund portfolios, and we can choose among fund of funds. However, during a bearish market, is this investment approach always successful? Is there a solution to this problem? Well, how do you know uh, what is a bearish market? You, you know that the market has gone down, uh, but you don't know whether it's going to go down further. So, uh, you know, uh, a, a bearish market. Well, if <coughs> it does uh, seem to be true that uh, uh, volatility does seem to persist, that there are wild periods and there's quiet periods in the, in the market. And like before the Bear Stearns uh, episode, uh, the market was quite quiet and the arbitrageurs were complaining that there wasn't enough volatility. Mm. And now there's lots of volatility. So volatility does seem to uh, be persistent, but uh, expected returns are not, uh, are notoriously not easily predicted. So, uh, but let's say it's a volatile market. It's a worrisome market. Uh, you don't know whether you pick. You know, things have gone down. You don't know whether they hit the bottom. Uh, well, any time, as of any time, you know, in terms of portfolio theory, in terms of uh, uh, mean variance analysis, what a mean variance analysis takes is your or somebody's projections of expected returns your estimates of volatility, your estimates of correlation, you the professional money manager or whoever, and uh, traces out what the uh, 
uh, implications of your beliefs are for the portfolio as a whole. What, you know, what combinations, given your beliefs about correlation and about <coughs> volatility, expected return, what, uh, you know, what's the efficient things to do now, including some of cash equivalent. Okay, and uh, it, it, it doesn't want to ask, it doesn't want to know uh, what happened on the average since 1926 when Ibbotson started keeping track it wants to know what is your your beliefs about the next spin of the wheel. I mean, if these were li com completely liquid, it would be for the next day. But since they're illiquid, it's for the next year or something like that, depending on what kind of game you're playing. So given your beliefs now, you uh, given your estimates of uh, uh, expected returns, which maybe you th I gather you think is a little less, given your... Uh, estimates of volatility, which is obviously more, and so on. You know, do, do what's efficient now. Uh, Darius Grzewczewski, the president of Radio PIN in Poland, asks, do you think financial turbulence in the United States may influence long-term prospects for European economies? What do you think about widespread globalization? Is it more harmful for Europe or for the United States? Well, first place, I'm an Adam Smith uh, I'm a Smithy, you know. Uh, <laughs> Me too. Yeah. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> I'm an Aaron Smith. <laughs> You're an Aaron Smith. I'm a, uh, we'll have to find it. We'll, we'll, we'll discuss at lunch. It's lunchtime here. It's dinner time there, I guess. Uh, we'll discuss at lunch whether you relate it to Adam Smith. <laughs> but Adam Smith says the wider the markets, the more prosperous our nation, and that uh, people uh, become prosperous by uh, trade over wide you know, over wide markets, and I believe that's true. And I, you know, I believe that's true. So the uh, the the question about uh, uh, is it worse for Europe or worse for America uh, or worse for uh, China to have free trade, uh, wide trade, globalization? Uh, it's not worse for anybody. It's it's great for everybody. Now uh, uh, back. In the 70s, you know, this business about trying to get investments which don't have a lot of covariance. Back in the 70s, uh, uh, Russell, George Russell, the Frank Russell Company, uh, was trying to get people to get institutional investors to get into things which had low, low covariance by getting into foreign stocks. Mm -hmm. And now everybody's globalized, so, you know. You, like they say, the United States sneezes and everybody catches a cold. I mean, it's, so uh, this globalization uh, of markets, both uh, markets for securities and markets for goods, uh, <coughs> does mean that it's harder to diversify a portfolio, but uh, uh, that's just the price you have to pay for having uh, wealth of nations. So I guess you're saying that stocks overall around the world are more highly correlated today because of globalization. Yes, sure. Okay. And uh, tough. <laughs> Get used to it. <laughs> our, our next question comes from Frankfurt, Germany. Ralph Holdrick asks, what are reasonable percentage ranges for asset classes within an efficient, diversified portfolio? Well, um, there's two answers to, to that. <laughs> One is, um, in principle, one should make estimates of expected returns and variances and covariances of asset classes and let the f chips were fall where they may. But in practice, uh, uh, when we use portfolio theory, we, we very often say, uh, well, we better uh, not uh, – de uh, very often we have a benchmark in, in mind. The benchmark might be a, uh, uh, a world portfolio, for example. And uh, uh, it, and we're a money manager. We're we're charged with that, uh, uh, with the uh, uh, with outperforming a world benchmark, for example. And we'll say we don't want to get too far from the benchmark weights. We want to get uh, this is very co uh, common to do. Uh, we don't want to get from the bet in terms of how much is in various uh, countries or regions. Uh, so. So even though in principle you shouldn't put any constraints on the optimizer, 
if we had the true covariance, we wouldn't put any constraints on how to optimize it. Uh, in fact, we do. And if we don't, if we're not a money manager, if we have our own, uh, uh, we're just investing for ourselves, uh, then again, uh, our benchmark is our consumption. You know, we, you know, our our income when we retire, our consumption when we retire, and uh, uh, there's a little bit of. Uh, if we're spending in dollars, maybe one is a little bit more correlated with dollars. Uh, but again, we want to uh, not uh, be perhaps too different from the world market, or at least, you know, at least, you know, the world market. So uh, I know I haven't answered it. In other words, the question, he wants numbers. He, uh, and I'm not going to give him numbers. 